Hi, my name is Barbara Barker, and as you know, I write plant-based cookbooks, and uh, I teach plant-based cooking classes, and since we're so close to Thanksgiving, I'm going to show you some things to do for Thanksgiving. But first, I have an apology, because last video, I mentioned putting in a flax egg, and I talked about adding the three tablespoons of liquid to it, but I forgot to tell you to put in one tablespoon of flaxseed meal um, plus the three tablespoons of liquid because that makes your flax egg. But in the meantime, I found another egg substitute which is called Just Eggs, and it's made out of mung beans, and it is 100% plant-based, and it works up exactly like scramblers or egg beaters or the flax egg. So in my bread recipe today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make the no wheat bread. And in the no wheat bread recipe, uh, this, a fourth of a cup of this goes into your liquid ingredients just as though you're using egg beaters or scramblers. So I'm going to start with the no wheat bread. Uh, this is what it looks like. And you can make it thin in a 9 by 13 pan, like a focaccia bread, where you could spread like uh, any kind of topping on it, like even a pizza topping or like a garlic bread, garlic butter topping. Or you can make it thick like this uh, in, in an 8 by 8, like what we're going to do today. And then you can cut it in horizontally in half and make it like for a cucumber sandwich or something like that. So you see the difference in the thickness between this and this. How, how much thicker that is than the focaccia style bread. And Lori tasted it, and it tastes exactly like whole wheat bread. So I'm going to get started with the, um, the wet ingredients, and then I'll do the dry ingredients after this is all mixed in. The wet ingredients in this is, of course, my half a cup of pureed tofu. And you know how I do that and a half a cup of applesauce, and two teaspoons of lemon juice, and a fourth of a cup of tahini or almond butter, one tablespoon of olive oil, one fourth cup of just eggs, or if you don't want to use this, you can make one flax egg, and um, then you can mix, you can pre-mix, your um, dry in a container like I have done today and this is one cup of flour and what I have the type of flour that I'm using today is a half a cup of the oat flour that I grind myself when you grind the rolled oats into a flour in your food processor and a half a cup of rice flour now rice flour can be a little tricky because a lot of times it comes in like a baking mix. You, you can try it with a baking mix, no problem. But I have found this is a really great rice flour. This Bob's One to One. Um, it's called One to One Baking Flour. It's Bob's Red Mill. And you can buy it anywhere, at any grocery store or at any health food store. Uh, you can even buy it at Walmart. So if they have a grocery store at the Walmart. So half a cup of oat flour, half a cup of rice flour, and three fourths of a teaspoon of baking soda, and one teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and that's it. That's your dry ingredient. And um, if you keep your pureed tofu in the refrigerator, you don't have to put this through the food processor to get the tofu ground up uh, because it makes a big mess. So um, just keep your pureed tofu on hand in the refrigerator. It'll last in there anywhere from three to five days. But if you're cooking for the holidays and you're making cookies and breads and everything with it, or even the brownies that I showed you a couple times ago, um, you'll be able to use it up very quickly. The pureed tofu 
also works wonderfully as a salad dressing. And um, we're not going to do salad dressing today, but I'll give you a hint. It's going to be in book number three, which uh, when I'm done with this video, I'm going to take six months off. And I'm going to finish book number three. I don't have a title yet, but it's coming. And in there will be my, my sweet and tangy, healthy salad dressing. And it's made with the pureed tofu. And you can put either lemon juice, a couple teaspoons of lemon juice, or um, any kind of balsamic vinegar you like, and um, any kind of seasoning you like. I use uh, mainly uh, ginger and garlic, and uh, although you can put turmeric, uh, you can put any seasoning you like. So this is the bread batter all done, and you can see it's a very thick batter. Seems like I'm always saying that. My batters are always very thick batters, but um, because there's no oil, and there's no sugar, um, so I think that's why it makes up into a thick batter. And then for insurance, what we're going to do is spray our pan. This is this is an eight by eight pan that I'm working with today because um, uh, Lori said she prefers the thick instead of the thin focaccia bread. So we're going to um, we're going to make this in an 8 by 8 and just spoon it in to your 8 by 8. You don't need to top it with anything because believe it or not, and I don't really know why it does this, but it gets kind of golden brown on top even though it goes in white. And um, I don't know what part of the recipe makes it do that, but it does it. So, um, once you get it all into your pan, you um, spread it out in your pan, and you preheat your oven to 350, and this cooks um, for about for about 40 minutes and then you know put the toothpick in the middle to make sure it comes out clean and then you'll know it's done in the center and um, this is also a bread where it should be a little cooled down or chilled in order to slice it like that otherwise if you slice it when it's too hot what's going to happen is it's just going to crumble on you so, well, I guess you could use it for something else that you need breadcrumbs for. But, um, anyway, this is how it looks when it goes in the oven. 350 for 40 minutes. And I'll give that to Lori to put in the oven. And, uh, and then she has to go to a class right after this. So, um, so that is the no wheat bread. Uh, the recipe's in my book, and uh, so there's no wheat, and there's no, no gluten, and um, no sugar, no oil, and you say, well how can I make bread if there's nothing in it like that? But I guarantee you, it makes a very nice bread. So, and you can see, uh, when you cut it open, it looks just like whole wheat bread, and it tastes exactly and smells exactly like whole wheat bread. I uh, developed this recipe because I needed a bread for my cucumber sandwiches, and I just I just didn't like what I was seeing at the grocery store, so I developed my own bread. So that's why. That's why I got it. So anyway, uh, actually, there's a wonderful book that was put out in the late 1970s, and I talk about it in my book, Inspired Plant-Based uh, Party. 
It was uh, a book that was put out by an author called Frances Lappy. And she was like at the forefront of the plant-based movement. And this bread recipe, and I gave her credit for it, is an adaptation of her bread recipe. She used a lot of applesauce. I don't know if she used uh, tofu. I think she used a little tofu. But then I adapted it and worked with it and created this one from it. But if you can ever get your hands on that book, uh, I think it's called Diet for a Small Planet. It will be the best plant-based book you can ever get. So the next thing I'm going to show you is my candied root vegetables, and they're roasted. And I'm showing them here on the platter. And what I do for Thanksgiving is um, I make a big deconstructed salad in a big round shallow bowl. And I put my, my huge pile of lettuce in the middle. This particular lettuce is, uh, you can just buy it in the package at the store. It is baby red butter leaf lettuce. I forgot to bring the package. But you can buy so many prepackaged lettuces now that you don't even need to buy a head of lettuce and cut it up and clean it and everything. You just dump it in the bowl. It's all pre-washed and ready to go. Um, so I put that. Sometimes I throw in some dandelions from my garden and or some sorrel from my garden. And so they've got their lettuce in the middle. And then in a big platter like this, I go around the platter and I kind of fan out the vegetables. Today we're going to do candied carrots and candied golden beets. Um, and we're also, I'm also going to show you how to candy a little tiny beet like this. Um, that's what these are up on top. And then for Thanksgiving, I keep going in sections so people can kind of just take tongs and take what they want. I do artichoke hearts and avocados and olives and um, pumpkin seeds and um, the day of cheese. And I just do like sections for each thing and of course the candy vegetables. And you can candy any vegetable. Uh, you can candy butternut squash. You can candy, uh, I've never tried green beans, but I'm going to try it this week. Uh, golden beets, carrots, Brussels sprouts are wonderful if you like them. My sister loves them. So Brussels sprouts are wonderful. And you can make a nice display and then you can have your salad dressing in little pour jars or bottles on the side. And so that will probably take the place of all your vegetables at Thanksgiving. Now this recipe, uh, I'm going to teach you how to make this marinade. You can't really see it very good because I'm using the white balsamic because I did not want my beets to turn um, dark. So I kept them golden. And to do that, you need to use the white balsamic. So this recipe that I'm going to teach you for the marinade will candy one pound of vegetables. This that I'm showing here, I don't know if you can see it very well, this is one pound of carrots, and it's about seven or eight carrots. And I'm gonna show you how I cut them, because I cut them in kind of an unusual way to get them to show the maximum amount of carrot and to fan out. So, um, believe it or not, this is one cleaned carrot. What I do is scrub brush with soap and water and rinse them real good. And um, do not peel your carrots because all the nutrition is between the skin and the carrot. So no need to be peeling your carrots. And then the way I cut them is I cut them on a very long diagonal. And um, boy, this knife is a lot sharper than my knife, I tell you, Lori. <laughs> so once you get them cut, on a long diagonal, you can see that uh, you get a lot of surface area to roast and cook. And so they turn out um, very pretty in the dish and they fan out nicely. And you can get about, what is that? Five, you can get about, depending on how you cut it and how big your carrots are, go for the medium size to small carrots. Don't go for the great big carrots because they're kind of tough. So what I do is, 
you can, each person can eat about six to seven slices of carrot. And you can, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just tossing it in the marinade until they're glistening so that you know they're well coated. So that's the carrots. And um, the beet is a little more tricky to cut because you have to put it, uh, clean it with a, your brush and your soap and water and rinse it good and then cut, you know, you cut the tops off and everything. And then I put them the flattest side down. I put them down and I cut them completely in half. And then once you get them cut in half, you see how it makes that little design in there, like a spiral almost? So um, once you get it cut completely in half, then you can cut it um, into your, your slices. And you can throw them in the marinade. So once you get your slice, then that's what you're going to be serving. It will show on your dish. It'll shrink a little bit, but you'll get like maybe 10 slices from one beet. And um, we should be eating um, a half a beet and one carrot every day. Um, carrots, as you know, are good for your eyesight. Uh, they're also good for your lungs, the health of your lungs. They're also good for, um, believe it or not, detoxing your liver. So if you've had to take any antibiotics or you've had to take any kind of medicine, uh, make sure you're eating a minimum of one carrot per day. You should be eating one carrot per day regardless. So, um, and beets uh, give us energy. So it's good to eat a half a beet every day. Now this beet is, uh, you can buy these in the grocery store. They're the small beets, I call them baby beets. And they have the tops on them. And when you clean them up, you just do a brush and soap and water and you cut off the um, parts of the green that are you know, weird looking, but leave a, try to leave a little leaf on them. And you can leave the little um, stem on or not. I always cut that off. And then these, you just cut them in half and you throw them tops and all in your marinade. And, um, and you throw them on a roasting pan. And don't let me forget to tell you the ingredients for the marinade. My sister said that my marinade recipe that I developed years ago is now all over the internet. But she said they use honey instead of maple syrup. I use maple syrup. Um, so when the beets are all roasted, this is what they look like. They're like little baby beets, the little round things. And when people eat them, yes, they will have to cut them up and eat them. That's good because it'll slow them down a little bit. Okay, so for the marinade, this is for one pound of root vegetables um, in a little mixing bowl. Or no, right in your mixing bowl that you're gonna toss in. So we don't even need the little mixing bowl. You just put in two tablespoons of maple syrup and um, an eighth of a teaspoon each of salt and pepper, two tablespoons of olive oil, Two teaspoons of balsamic vinegar. You can use any kind you like, or you can use the white. One teaspoon of dried thyme, because what thyme does, the herb, it brings out the flavor of the root vegetable. Uh, and there's, there's not really any other herb that will do that. And um, you can add, if you want to, if you want your Marinade to be thinner, you can add a fourth a cup of water. I think in my book, it's in my book recipe, my book inspired plant-based party. I think in the book it says a fourth a cup of maple syrup and a fourth a cup of water. But I've, I've cut all that to just two tablespoons of maple syrup because I want my marinade to be a little thick. 
So um, once you get them tossed, uh, you put them, you put them on a baking sheet, and um, you don't have to spray this. But what this is, it's just uh, tin foil to the size of the baking sheet. This is a large cookie sheet. I don't know what it measures to, and a piece of parchment paper. Don't ever let your food touch on aluminum foil because um, it, uh, aluminum foil is not good for your brain. And so um, you get your, your veggies all spread out in, a, um, in your pan. And now this, you're gonna have, you might have a little extra marinade left over. Now what you can do with this extra marinade is you can um, spoon it over your vegetables to make sure you get all the marinade on all your vegetables. But what I found, another use for this marinade is you could just mix it with a little bit of pureed tofu and uh, it makes a wonderful salad dressing even though it does have oil on it. Now what I do is also, because uh, I don't like my vegetables to turn out real crispy or dark or charred or anything like that, I cover my vegetables with a little bit of parchment touching on the vegetables and a little bit of tin foil to hold it in place. And I just lightly cover it before I put it in the oven. And these cook also, 350 for 40 to 45 minutes. You can test them with a toothpick or whatever if you have one of those metal skewer things to test with. Um, and voila, you will have roasted candy vegetables. So um, have a good Thanksgiving and please value yourself and take good care of yourself and eat plant-based. Thank you.